everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about the photoelectric effect. And the photoelectric effect is a property of light which can best be described by thinking of light as a particle, not a wave. In the last few videos of this playlist, we've been talking about all kinds of properties of light, frequency, amplitude, wavelength, interference, diffraction, all these properties that can best be described by thinking of light as a wave. The photoelectric effect is not the case. So what is the photoelectric effect? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Sometimes when you shine light on the surface of, the, of a metal, so this block here is just a metal, when you shine light on this metal surface, in some cases, the metal can release electrons. So sometimes the light has enough energy to dislodge electrons from the metal. But not all forms of light can do this. If we were to shine blue light on the surface of the metal, regardless of its intensity, even very dim, low intensity blue light can release electrons from the metal. However, if we were to switch that over to a red lamp, if we were to shine some red light on the surface of this metal, then no electrons would be released. Even if we were to increase the intensity, increase the brightness of that red light, there's no way you're going to get electrons to come off of that metal surface. So this was very puzzling at the time because there were a lot of uh, differences between what classical electromagnetic theory would predict and what was really observed from the photoelectric effect. Classical electromagnetic theory treats light as purely a wave, not a particle. And according to this classical theory, if you change the frequency of the light or the amplitude, which determines the intensity of the light, then this should affect the emission of electrons. So under the classical theory, red light, even at high intensity, should be able to remove electrons from the metal. But in reality, this was not the case. In reality, we have what's called a threshold frequency. And underneath this threshold frequency, regardless of the intensity of the light, electrons would not be dislodged from that metal surface. Another difference between what classical theory would predict and what was really observed is that according to classical theory, if the light was very dim, then there should be a lag time. There should be a little bit of time that elapses between when the light is shown on the metal and when the electrons are released. But in reality, if you have this low intensity, high frequency light, there was no lag time. The electrons released instantaneously. So how could we account for all of these discrepancies between classical theory and the observed reality? Well, Albert Einstein came along in 1905 and suggested a very wild proposition. He suggested that light energy must come in chunks. So again, now we're treating light as a particle, not a wave. And a particle of light containing a chunk of light energy is what we call a photon. And the amount of energy in a photon of light is given by this equation here, E equals H times nu, where nu, of course, is the frequency of the light, E is the energy of the photon, and H is what we call Planck's constant, which has the value 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. If we wanted to express the energy in terms of the wavelength of the light, we can do that fairly easily. We know from a previous video that nu, the frequency, equals c, the speed of light, over lambda, the wavelength. And so if we substitute that expression for nu into this equation, we're going to get e equals hc over lambda. So again, these two equations are just two different ways of expressing the same thing either expressing the energy in terms of the frequency of the light or in terms of the wavelength of the light. So this proposition elegantly explains the observed reality that we saw in the photoelectric effect. How does it explain the photoelectric effect? Well, again, if we think back, remember that low intensity red light couldn't eject electrons. High intensity red light couldn't eject electrons either. And the reason for this is because if you're increasing the intensity of red light, all you're doing is adding more low energy photons to that metal. Even though you're adding overall more energy to the metal, each photon doesn't have enough energy to dislodge the electron. So none of those photons individually has enough energy to remove an electron from the metal. 
But if you change the frequency of that light, so if you increase that frequency to say blue light, now you're dealing with photons that have much more energy. Now each of those photons has enough energy individually to remove electrons from that metal. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, in the next couple of videos, we're gonna talk even more about how light behaves as a particle. So I hope you stick around for that, and I hope you have a great one.